Hello and welcome back to the shed. The whole idea of this video is that perhaps you've built the beginner tool chest or the dovetail tool chest and you're not sure you know how to store your tools within in these tool chests. You might have some trays like we did in the previous video in your beginner tool chest and you're like well how am I going to use these to store my tools? So that's what we're going to be talking through today. First of all I'm going to draw your attention into this dovetail chest. So when it comes to the dovetail chest, you can obviously see front and center is the, the handsaw storage. And I do have a video for where I made these little toggles and attached them on here, so I'll leave that link in the description. Now, the limitation to having this on your tool chest is when the lid comes down, you're taking up a lot of space, so you actually lose quite a bit of space in terms of trays and stuff, and that's why this box has only got this single tray that you see here. And the reason this chest is sliding side to side is also because of this stop that's put in here takes up space. So I couldn't really have a tray going the other way like in the beginner chest. The other limitations of this type of saw storage is where do we store our tenon saws, our dovetail saws and any other specialist saws that we'd like to carry with us. So I'll show you where that is because we're storing them down in the main part of the chest. So I'm just gonna talk through way in which this chest works and then we'll talk about some alternatives with the beginner chest. So next you see this tray that I've put in this one. Now in, in here, in this particular chest is where I store sharpening equipment, Veritas honing jig, marking gauges, squares, knives, pencils, any of the marking stuff. Obviously I've got a few hinges sitting in here and I have all of the attachments and, and all these little screw bits for my brace. If you're using a power drill, you could fit your power drill in the bottom here. You could store your drills and everything like that up, up in the top tray. And uh, that would work quite well. Even for a machinist that's got a lot of electrical power tools, this chest could be useful in that manner. And you could actually store other things with specialist storage up the top here. Another advantage of the tray is that if you need to take all your marking stuff and whatnot that's in that tray, simply grab it, lift it out, and because it's a fairly solid tray, it's not gonna fall apart. So then we dive down into the main part of this chest, obviously, and I'm just gonna take out, this as my entire auger bit set. This whole open space just here can be designed for whatever tools you want, and it's just open for them to fit in. Now at this end here, I've got a little just uh, chisel rack here. It's just got blocks wide enough for the chisels to sit in. I've got my brace down in here. I've got a, a, a 45, so I could put all my Stanley 45 bits in here as well. Now obviously moving down in here, we've got the uh, all the hand planes there, quick access, easy, which is another reason that chest tray moves the way it does. And these are just dowels in the back here and they just rest against each other because there's no room. It's just tight enough for them to fit here and they're all just easy access with a little dowel on the back to hold them in place. I have a dovetail saw that sits in on top of the tenon saw and they just sit in against a couple of dowels here that holds them in place. So they're not the most secure and it's probably not the best for the plates but in this style, that's where it sits. Now we'll move on from the dovetail chest onto the beginner chest which of course, as you've seen in the videos, doesn't actually have any fit out in it yet. The first thing you'll notice in the beginner chest is that we don't have any hand saws stored up here and I had no intention of actually storing them up here. So you can see what I've currently got in this tray. I've got my tenon saw, my gent saw, or you could have a dovetail saw in here and then I've got my rip cut and cross cut saw that I had in the other toolbox in here. And as you can see they all fit in here fairly well. Obviously having the tenon saw and the uh, gent saw or dovetail saw on top is good because they're going to be your most used saws. Obviously over the other toolbox we automatically have our hand saws in a nice easy to access place. And I think it's a better storage for your tenon saw and your dovetail saw because they're not sitting on their plates. The other advantage that we have here with this is that we can take this out and we can take this wherever we want. We can place it out of the way like I'm going to do now. And then we've got access into the next till. If you didn't have that top till because you decided you didn't want to, you can actually store hand planes up in this top till here. You could have your chisel sitting loose here because, I mean, with six of them, they're not going to move. They're kind of locked in here. Or you could set up a special little storage piece in here to keep these chisels safe. But this tray is more like 
the tray from the other toolbox so you can add all your, your marking stuff, your pens, your pencils. You can get some longer rulers sitting nice and flat in here, your, your marking knives. And of course, you can set up any sort of specialist storage in here that you want. If you uh, didn't want to have all your hand planes down the bottom, you could actually store some of them on the side in here, depending on, on what you want to store. I also made this one deep enough that if you wanted to put your brace and bits in here, you can actually get them stored up in here to, to free up the bottom. That just allows a little more flexibility within this because it's such a deep till. So obviously the other advantage you have here, you can reach in past this till here to grab a single hand plane out from down the bottom. If you have it in the right spot, it is wide enough to get even a five and a half out of there. A little bit of a tight squeeze, but if you've got a hand plane on that side or on this side, you can actually grab a single one out so you don't have to remove this till if you don't need to. But we have the advantage that we can just slide this till out and we can move it out of the way like the other one. Just like the other toolbox, we can store, I believe it is four hand planes across the bottom here. Now, that assumes that you've got some longer hand planes. If you've only got number fours, you can actually get a whole bunch of them along in a row here. So if you wanted to just use it as a collector's storage chest or something like that, this tool chest would actually work for that uh, as well as a functioning chest as well. So now I've got an idea of how our hand planes could go in if we did it this way. You could even store additional ones down this end if you wanted to. You can get at least three number fours end on end on this side here. And, and that's obviously an option. You could put just a screw in the back or a dowel like we did in the other one to hold these in place. If you decided you didn't want your number six in there because it was going to make it too heavy, we could take the number six out, make room for a couple of block planes, some molding planes or something in the side here as well. The other option it gives you is that you could actually space them like this and actually glue strips in between them to hold them, which means that they're not going to bang against each other if you move this tool chest and you do have that particular flexibility. You also have another option in this toolbox with storage and that is to add a, a little storage tray or rack like we did with the chisels. But in this particular box, if you are happy to keep moving the till out, you could have some higher options like your chisels and stuff running along the back of the box. Now the type of rack that I would suggest in this one for flexibility it's similar to the one I've got in my toolbox back here. This style like I've got here. It's a very open style. All it is, is a straight piece of wood with a couple of little blocks that brings it out wide enough to hold tools like, obviously, spoke shave, saw set, any other odd shapes. You could add files in here. And this style even allows you to house chisels in here. If you ran that style of rack along here, all your chisels running along the back like this held up, and any things like dividers, spoke shaves, any other odd marking gauges and things like that. You could slide them in this rack along here. The only thing that you would have to worry about then is if we've got that sort of storage rack there, is that this till is only going to be able to come to here, which then you lose the flexibility of being able to pull your hand planes out. But if you are happy with sort of getting this toolbox set up and then lifting out these trays, setting them up on the bench so you're ready to go. And then you've got a, like a rack, a flexible rack that you can just work straight off inside here and grab your hand planes with ease and anything else that's stored in the bottom here. Then that sort of storage rack along the back there would be perfect for anyone that wants to do that. And it would also free up more space in this till here. And then of course, we still have this open area. Obviously the space changes and you do only have the height up to this first till here. That does still mean you can get things like your Stanley 45 in here. Uh, you can still fit things like your, your bits box for your brace, except it has to lie flat. You still have quite a bit of flexibility to fit things in the bottom of the box here. Say you're going to be using your radius plane, you can fit that in there. If you wanted to fit your, your power drill, you could fit that in there on its side. You could put boxes of storage bits. If you've got routers and things like that, you've got like a lot of space down here to store things. But you also have the flexibility that if you wanted this to be larger is that you change these little slides that are only held in with double sided tape or friction fit. And you can adjust the height of your trays and the space that you've got. So maybe your hand drills and all your power tools can stand up. And in this case, if you were to do this and you didn't have the bottom till, this top till would actually still slide over the top. So Obviously you need to make these toolboxes to the way in which you work. 
and you kind of have to customize them instead of just using a one size fits all. Many different ways that you can store tools within a toolbox. And you just need to start thinking about the ways you would like to store your own tools. And perhaps you work with the toolbox first, slowly work up to the way that you'd like to really customize your storage. So there you have it folks. As you can see, there's a lot of different ways that you can think of to store tools in these toolboxes, whether that's in a tray, hanging stuff on the lid, uh, the way you fit your hand planes in the bottom, the storage, whether you have trays, whether you don't have trays, the width of your trays if you're not fitting saws in so you can grab tools out easier or access from both tills. And the most important thing when it comes to this, if you have trays, is that you have to make the trays nice and easy to remove to access things underneath in the event that you need to. Especially with this beginner tool chest with these double trays, you do really need to be able to remove those trays to actually access stuff quite easily out of them, depending on whether you have a storage rack on the back or not. So there you have it folks. That is a whole bunch of the different ways in which you can store tools in toolboxes. And it's as variable as you are. The way you work is the way you set up your toolbox and the more comfortable you are with the way your toolbox is set up, the, the easier and the better and the quicker you're going to work. So if you like this video and you'd like to learn how to build these toolboxes and the tool trays, I'll leave some links to the tool storage playlist and also some of these build videos on the screen here for you so you can check them out for yourself. Bye for now.